Greetings. Let's talk. One of the first things I ever did in the SCA as a voice herald was uh, I was at actually my group's local event at the time. And it was Sunday, and the herald, the sight herald, uh, had, had rolled his ankle cracked it or something. He, he couldn't walk. And I was part of the crew that was with him in uh, the lodge we were at and we were um, you know, putting ice on his ankle and he's like, I gotta go do these announcements. And, and the people immediately tending to him were like, you're not going anywhere, that ankle is swollen? No. Uh, and he's like, well, someone's gotta go do the announcements. And I, uh, I was part of this and, and I said, well, what's it require? Or I remember if I said that, someone said, what's required? And he goes, you just got to go out and announce this to sight. And I said, I mean, I'll do it. And everyone looked at me and they're like, do you know how? And I'm like, walk out, be loud, walk back, make sure I'm understood, right? I mean, that's what I've seen you guys do. And so Wolf Gear, uh walked me through the announcements. It was just a couple of things. And I walked out, and I walked, it was two points, and I walked out facing the camps, and I walked over there facing the commons area. It was a big outdoor campsite. And you know, took a deep breath, proper breath control. I'd, I'd been choir singer before that in middle school and high school, so seven years of, vo of voice training. And uh, oye, oye, did the announcements. Walked a few paces this way. Oye, oye, did the announcements, and I walked back. As I walked back in the room, um... All the people are there, and they're all looking at me with big, wide eyes. And one of them, Oxley, as a matter of fact, he looked at me and he goes, Ivo, I think we found your calling in life. And uh, that's how I got into psych heraldry. And I, you know, it, the rest is history. It's, that's been one of the staples of my SCA experience is psych heraldry. So let's talk about psych heraldry in movies and I'm sure a bunch of you are scratching your heads going what and a couple of you are like probably rolling your eyes going oh my god it's gonna be boring I'm like no 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 we we're gonna have some fun with this one because I want to talk about the HBO miniseries Rome uh, which by the way if you've um, not seen it I highly encourage you to go watch it. It is a amazing piece of drama. The the history, I mean, with any screen production, the history is um, kind of touch and go in places. I, it doesn't claim to be historical drama. Uh, it is based on a book which was inspired by a, a tiny, tiny handful of um, a very tiny handful of actual historical documents, and the author, you know, built up an entire fictional story around this. So that is that is the framework of it. But the story does include a lot of really nicely done bits of historical data that I do feel like we as SCAers can appreciate and maybe even learn from. And one of these is the newsreader, um, played by, I believe it was Ian McShane. Uh, who's a British actor who I love a lot of his work. I've seen him in a couple of roles. And the newsreader stands in the middle of the town square, the, actually the, the, city, the city center in Rome, and reads the news. Um, and that sounds very dry, but has a dramatic story piece he um, has, a, has a dramatic center, rather. This fills the role that a more modern story would probably use clips of news media to tell. You know, the, the, uh, you know, the fictional newscaster reading a late, uh, the update, which in five or ten seconds catches you up on what you need to know to set the stage for the next scene. That is the role of this character. So within the series, this newsreader um, dramatically tells part of the story for you so that number one the writers and directors don't have to put hundreds of actors and thousands of hours into telling it but also it doesn't waste the viewers time in 
um, having to watch these scenes. It's not important for the story they want to tell. The real funny thing for me, the irony there for me, is that at the same time, what we know about what today we would call voice heraldry in Rome is very well depicted here. Um, this idea of a figure professionally, this is his job, he is paid to do this, standing in a public center and announcing the news so that it is officially dispersed to the public so the public can use it. Um, this was a real job in Imperial Rome. This was a real job. It was a real job historically in multiple places. Um, but this was an integral part of Roman society. There are a lot of really good points in the this handful of scenes where this character is on screen that help I think create a very good framework for what we as sight heralds or road heralds, whatever verbiage you want to use in the SCA, um, want to do. I think these scenes, there's, there's only about nine minutes of them, he's not on screen for that much time, but I think these scenes help show how important a sight herald is to the functional side of an SCA event because um, there's a lot of things that happen to him, there's a lot of things he has to say that even though they are set in Imperial Rome and they are much more real world than anything in the SCA really has to deal with, I feel like there are things there that we can relate to. There are things there that we can all, a lot of road and sight heralds can kind of sit back and go, yep, been there. So um, let, let's start with the, the first few here. Um, I want to... Uh, we're, we're going to go through these, and I, I want to just talk about them a little bit and, and share what I really like about them. A fine reward is offered for the return of a slave woman, stolen or absconded, from the house of Marius Dolabella. Under the protection of Pompey Magnus and Julius Caesar, Senate sits tomorrow. Be aware. No disorder will be tolerated. By order of the Senate, Gaius Julius Caesar is declared an enemy of Rome. All good citizens are bound to do him harm if they are able Okay, so these first two scenes, um, they again, dramatically, they help set the stage for a lot of what is coming within the series. Um, but... <sighs> I think it really kind of um, talks about the work of the Sight Herald. His first announcement is saying, you know, a, any taken or absconded slave return. Obviously, the SC is never going to engage in that type of conversation. That's not something we recreate. But that also, that absconded slave, that has nothing to do with the story. That is a, a setting piece to help talk about what is normal within that society. We do announcements of of you know there are times we will do announcements as a site herald that maybe three people in our audience it's really relevant to them but we have to do those announcements um everyone's reminded to please move your car and there's only one car on site that needs to be moved we know there's only one person out there who really cares about this but we're out there doing the announcements so what are the odds that that anyone out there in that in that clip actually knows an absconded slave or or knows someone who has taken a slave that's not theirs that's um you know it's minimal doesn't matter he's there to make that announcement so he's going to announce it that's all there is to it um and the other thing sometimes and, and this is a little bit more in the sca towards the court heraldry side because court heralds read the official proclamations on this but he in the next clip he's talking about um, someone who is now an enemy of the state. That's one of those official announcements. That's one of those ones where his announcements are enforcing the law. Like when the Roman Senate says this person's now an enemy of the state, it's the newsreader's words that make sure the public knows. This is what gives the law its teeth in that case. And <clears throat> we... Granted, law reading in the SCA is done by a court herald, but there are still times where site heralds and announcements involve policy. Like, um, site is dry. Not discrete containers, but site is dry. If you have alcohol, put the container in your car or throw it out. Like, I've had to do that announcement. Um, you know, 
no weapons allowed in this premises. I had to do that announcement. And God, telling a bunch of SCAers they have to leave their swords at the door. It's, oh, like pulling teeth. I haven't had to do that too many times, to be fair, but I've had that conversation. Um, the, the, the important stuff. And he's out there in that, in these scenes so far, he is out there, and he's just reading the news. That, that is his job, and that is also our job. Of We need to impartially convey this information. Um, and I, I think that is very well conveyed here, and I think that even though that film isn't classically medieval, and he, nowhere in, in the film, or in the series rather, is he referred to as a herald, I still think that, that scene, those scenes really, really do a good job of talking about the type of this is my job but still it's very very important work that announcers do and that's you know that that's the type of work that site heralds do in the SCA so let's let's keep watching uh, there's a couple of other really good scenes coming up and I, I just want to highlight a few other things will be considered enemies of Rome martial law is in effect for the safety of all citizens groups of more than three men shall not congregate in public spaces. A curfew is in effect. Any person found on the street after dark will be subject to summary judgment. Long live General Gaius Julius Caesar, savior of our republic. Now this is the part here. I really got a chuckle out of this scene. And of course, within the scene itself, to spell this out, so in case you missed this, is he's saying groups of larger than three are subject to summary judgment. Has there's a military garrison marching past him? Has he and his two assistants are staying there, which makes him three? There's no one else around. Who the hell is he announcing to? Um, you know... <laughs> Not only is that historical, because, I mean, the logic is there's probably some people um, in their houses who can hear him through the windows, but as a herald, I've done announcements where I'm out there and it's raining or it's cold and I'm yelling down a hallway or I'm yelling across a building or I am outside yelling at a camp and I can confidently say there's maybe two or three people out there. Um, and you're like, is this having any effect? Is this important at all? And you're like, yeah, it is. You have to do this. It's part of your job. Um, and that's exactly what he's doing here. It, and you can hear it in his voice. The, the actor does such a wonderful job of like, here is my announcement. God, why am I doing this? Um, but he does it. He, he reads it anyway. And the, the, it's such a nuanced performance. I love it for what it is. It's such a nice little tidbit within the series. But... Again, that announcement, that idea of this is vitally important news, and is there anyone even here to listen to it? You know, part of the nature of the beast. Um, you know, I've, I've had to do announcements for, you know, rough weather is coming, make sure all your stuff is tied down. And everyone's busy running back to their camp, so half of my announcements were said to almost empty fields. Comes with the territory. But um, I, I just love that scene, and I, I think it does do a good job dramatically of helping to set the stage for the, the larger, more involved scenes to come in that particular episode. But again, I think we as heralds get to watch it and relate to it. So, let's, uh, still got more to come, and uh, let's take a look at the uh, next couple scenes here. Has set sail for Greece, carrying the army of General Mark Antony. This month's public bread is provided by the Caroline Brotherhood of Millers. The Brotherhood uses only the finest flour, true Roman bread for true Romans. Again, here we see information important to the public being shared, um, and, and that's a common theme in, in for his scenes in this film. But one of the things I really wanted to point out here is the scene where he is up on the pedestal in the rain, of course, and you see him handing off the wax tablets and have another guy handing one up to him. And the important thing here, 
And, and the thing that I want you to take away from this is what I have taught my site heralds, anytime I have taught site heraldry is, you do not have to remember your announcements. You do not have to memorize word for word what you're gonna say, write it down. And this scene, um, I, I love it because he's not memorizing anything. <laughs> he's got two assistants sitting here handing him the scripts while he's reading them. They're paying for his voice, for his projection. He doesn't need memory for that, he just has to read. Um, and I, I just love that in the scene because it's, it's a form of professionalism. It's a form of, of illustrating the technical side of that job. And I absolutely feel like that is something a CA site heralds should uh, take note of. I feel like that's a perfect example. And historically, we know that, that news readers and announcers and people we would today call heralds um, did in fact do that sort of thing. So um, I just love that tidbit. I, I honestly geek out over that. Call me strange, you wouldn't be the first, but um, there is that. Uh, but there's more. Oh, there's more. Loans, a public banquet will be held to celebrate those senators. <laughs> Slaves and freedmen are not eligible. Any repetition of recent disorders will be punished with severity. Senate in session today. No assemblies in the vicinity. No gaming. No prostitution. May all the gods Bless our sacrosanct father, Gaius Julius. So, at the fourth hour, a funeral service will be held for Gaius Julius Caesar under terms of truth and in the spirit of unity and forgiveness. Eulogies will be delivered by Praetor Marcus Junius Brutus and Consul Mark Antony. No prostitutes, actors, or unclean tradesmen may attend. Now, on these last couple scenes, and those, those are the last ones I want to show you here, um, I kind of let them run because, in terms of substance, uh, it's all, at this point, heavy plot-centric material that isn't necessarily relevant to this conversation. But did you notice the hand gestures and the the finger gestures and and the clenching the chest and he kept doing this those are not random um first of all th there are two things here that i really like about this um the first is that it's my understanding that all of the gestures were actually researched by the actor and the writers for this and they are based on translated documents from rome about public speaking and these are at least the artistic interpretation. I, someone much more familiar with this will have to speak to its accuracy. But this idea of these were publicly taught, publicly accepted gestures used for emphasis, for attention, to hold applause, to encourage applause, to encourage engagement, to emphasize a point. You notice there was a lot of very specific gestures that were very alien to a modern audience. And... Um, Within the story, as a point of history, those are, as we understand, to be very accurate. Those are what a public speaker, whether it be a newsreader or a senator, would probably have used during their presentation. These are gestures that the culture of Rome understood as a, as a visual punctuation to verbal statements. Now, in the SCA, now, a lot of heralds, myself included, rely on our voices alone because a lot of our audiences can't see us or are not necessarily in a position to see us. We trust our voice to reach around corners or over tall people in front. And it's our words that matter. But that doesn't mean that we have completely given up on the visual, my baton, when I use it. Um, you will see me hold that up. That is a visual cue to hold people's attention. Um, I've talked in a previous video how I use my baton as a gesturing item to halt an approaching army. You know, during a large procession, uh, we had an emergency and I was able to use that where an announcement may not have been picked up, the visual cue. The visual element of voice heraldry is something that we often kind of self-teach and all too often overlook when we're discussing it. And um, I feel like this show does a really good job 
of, of highlighting that there is a visual side of it. There are things we can do non-verbally to help accentuate or draw attention to our words and the emphasis to help convey the message. So, um, like I said, if you haven't seen the show, I do highly encourage you to watch it. Rome is uh, an amazing piece of drama. Um, there is some really good history in there. There also is, is a lot of fiction. Um, I'm not holding this up as a historical textbook. Um, it's not. But it's still a thoroughly enjoyable show. And I think there is some good history and some good SCA-isms to take out of it. Uh, so that's what I have to offer here. Um, and I want to know, what are your thoughts? What do you think about my uh, points here? And maybe what are some shows that you might know about that talk about a SCA um, relevant voice heraldry or in this case sight heraldry so that's uh that's the show for today thank you very much for joining me i'll see you at the next event goodbye god bless